What's up, everybody? Good morning. Uh, it is a beautiful Tuesday morning here in Northwest Indiana. Uh, just getting situated, but <clears throat> as as normal, I've been uh, sorry. It's casual day today in the uh, office here. As normal, uh, I have been excited about this topic, this sales topic that we've been on for the last, I don't know, going on a couple months now. Um, but I'm, I'm excited because this is the very thing that's going to make you more money as a real estate agent. The ability to go through this uh, process and the ability to use uh, these tools as um, something that's going to help you with the sales gradient is really, really important. And so that's why I'm so pumped up. <clears throat> we went through on last week's sales call, the training call, we went through um, the idea of uh, spin and what that is. And we started to talk before that about being a sales gradient and getting up there. Now we're actually putting the, the talking words in place. So spin is situation, problem, what does that imply? <clears throat> both good and bad. And what's the need? That's spin. Well, this is the the, the words, the the uh, verbal um, uh, things that go behind that. And so this takes practice for sure. Uh, let me bring up a couple of my notes. I don't know. I, I haven't thought about it yet if I'm going to share the screen uh, just because I don't want to go too far into this. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Let's see. Yeah, let's let's do that. I'm going to share the screen. So, boom. And boom. Okay, we're sharing. Boom, sharing the screen. Awesome. Okay. So, these are kind of my notes. This is this is what I've been doing uh to kind of take uh everything that we've learned and kind of put it in order so that I can teach on it. Um this is the so here's my notes. This is the sales mechanics when you have a prospect on the table using spin, situation, problem, implication, and need, uh, you will use these types of questions, open, closed, and reflective, to kind of get up the gradient. And then it's going to get us to a couple of other things. One thing called the trial close and the next thing called the close. Most people don't know how to get here. I'm giving you the pathway. So today, at the very least, we're going to be talking about these questions uh, for you guys. So um, questions, open-ended questions, closed-ended questions, reflective questions. And the fourth one I failed to mention a little bit earlier, the buying question. That's the trigger for you to take specific action. When you get there and you hear that buying question from the prospect, boom. That's when you got to take action. Up until then, you're going to be the one asking all of the questions. So let's go into uh, this. Let's get into it. So the first thing is when we're trying to find out the situation, the problem, um, we're going to be opening <clears throat> the door to uh, questions that we're going to be asking to help us get there. There's two particular questions that you're going to use to direct the conversation. You're going to be able to move up this gradient by way of the questions that you ask. These two questions are directional questions. Uh, number one, it's uh, open-end and closed-end questions. Let me explain what the difference is. So let's we'll start with closed-end. A closed-end question is when you're looking for an answer, A or B. A or B. So. Um, did you have breakfast this morning? Yes or no? Um, what do you like better, red or blue? Uh, what's a good time for you, two or four? Those are closed-ended questions because you're closing off the dialogue, number one. And number two, you're looking for a specific, a specific um, uh, answer A or B. If it's A, you go one way. If it's B, you go another. So those are closed ended questions. And they're really, really good <clears throat> for um, 
uh, finding information out very quickly. And you want to do this. You don't want to ask these questions in such a way, a manner that you're going to be acting like a robot, right? Do you like red or blue? You don't want to do that. You want to have, you know, some, some, um, uh, classiness and some very, um, you know, just conversational type talking. And there's a way that you can ask, hey, you know, what's your favorite color? Is it red or is it blue? And so it's a much softer way to ask that, but make no mistake about it behind the scenes. I'm wanting to know, is it red or blue? If it's red, I'm going to go one way. If it's blue, I'm going another way. But that's kind of how that is. It could be a yes or no question. It could be a two o'clock or four o'clock uh, question to get that answer. Uh, it could be, um, you know, hey, are you looking to sell in March or in June? You know, kind of thing. Or are you looking to sell this year or next year? Um, and they might say, well, this year for sure. And then so that's your answer. And then that tells you some things. For instance, in that example, if they're selling this year, their urgency is already high. If they want to sell next year, the urgency isn't as high and you either have to do one, uh, make their urgency higher, or two, make sure that you're consistently following up with them. Um, you know, that's the, that's the power of a closed end question. And nobody even really kind of thinks about that in the sales process, but that's really, really important. I learned this. Let me see. Let me put some dates back together for you. So I graduated from college. I had a degree in business and a degree in biology. And um, I remember getting my first job uh, it was in the environmental industry. And they sent me off to this school. Um, they knew I was going to get into sales. And they sent me off to this school. It was the uh, Xerox School of Selling. That's right, Xerox, like the copying machines. Back in the day, I say back in the day, like I'm real old. I am old. but. Uh, Back in the day, they had Xerox had the best sales method. Xerox, IBM, uh, you know, a couple of their big blue chip stock big companies. Uh, they really had the market on sales. Uh, they had a huge sales force, and they put a lot of effort and money into training. So I went to this Xerox sales uh, training, and this is where I learned all this stuff. It's classic. It's very. Um, these are classic things to get somebody up the sales process. This is where I first learned about closed-ended questions and open-ended questions. Now, we went over the closed-ended questions. Let's talk about the open-ended questions. What are those and what are they used for? Well, if closed-ended questions are used for a yes or a no, a blue or a red, a two or a four, an open-ended question is going to be where you're looking to get more information out of the prospect in much more detail. This plays very well with spin because uh, you can use open-ended questions to get the storyline, the narrative about what's happening with their situation, what problem they're trying to solve, and probably the most important in the three, what is the implication of that, good and bad? If you solve the problem, what does that mean for you and your family? If you don't solve the problem, what does that mean for you and your family? So an open-ended question would go like this. Well, hey, Tom, um, yeah, I can appreciate your situation. And I certainly understand, you know, the, the challenge that you have in selling your house to take a new job in Florida. Tell me a little bit about what would happen if you weren't able to sell your home in the allotted time that you want to do it in, and you're not able to get the maximum dollar amount for the sale. What, what would happen uh, with that situation? And so let the prospects speak. Let them speak on what that would mean for them and their family. Um, I may not start directly off with that question because that's more of a pain question. Um, I might start with a scenario of giving them a little bit of um, uh, you see, again, it comes down to these chemistry, uh, the chemistry in the brain. You know, when I give somebody a positive effect, it's like injecting dopamine in them. If I give them a negative effect or create a little stress, I'm actually uh, increasing the cortisol level. I know if, you, if you're not into that or haven't heard that a lot, this sounds kind of goofy, but the brain really is a pharmacy. And there's a pharmacist there giving out chemicals. So when I ask questions like, hey, man, 
what's up, Tom? If it, it, I appreciate you telling me about your situation and your challenge. Let me ask you this. If you were able to sell your house in the next three months like you want to, and you're able to get maximum dollar for your house, what would that mean for you and your family? So that question is already sending positive vibes into the brain. The brain is releasing, in small doses, a level of dopamine. That's how you get people to start thinking different. Questions uh, are really, really important. There was a book that I read. You might want to go out and, and get it. It's called Questions Are the Answer. Um, I know it's a little play on, on the title there, but uh, questions are so powerful. Uh, Socrates called uh, the way that he learned the Socratic method of learning, or actually other people now named it that, the Socratic method of learning, because he would ask questions to get the knowledge that he was looking for. That's what we're doing here. So when I say, Tom, what would that mean for you and your family if, A, you're able to sell your house in the three months like you want, and B, you're able to get top dollar like you're looking for? Immediately, there's a movie playing in Tom's head, and it's a movie that Tom likes. Because they like that, a little bit of dopamine gets released, and Tom feels good. Now, just like any movie, though, you need a little drama. You need a little pressure. You need a little stress. You need a villain, perhaps. You need uh, a tragedy, perhaps. That's what makes good movies, by the way. So I might, um, I might go to Tom and say, well, Tom, what would happen if you don't sell that house in uh, the next three months? Matter of fact, you don't sell it in the next nine months. And you're getting less than you really want for the property. What would that mean to you? And so, boom, when that happens, stress goes up. I could go even further into that and say, Tom, picture and imagine a situation where you weren't able to sell that house for nine months. And all of a sudden, you're doing price reductions, price reductions, price reductions. And uh, you're not able to get top dollar for that house. You see, in Tom's mind, I'm painting a picture or actually running a movie. And because of the stress that I'm adding to that situation, there's cortisol that gets released um, in Tom's brain. So uh, I'm using these questions to get us up the sales gradient and to start being the pharmacist. For those of you that think, wow, I've never thought about it like that, but that's quite a responsibility. I'm now playing pharmacist and I have no training in this. I get it. I get it. That's why I tell people all the time, there is a ton of responsibility in sales. A ton. Um, sales is the art of giving somebody what they really want or maybe even what they need. Um, but there's a responsibility behind that because there's so much that goes into the sales process that uh, most salespeople don't know that. Most salespeople aren't even thinking in this realm of how to get somebody up the gradient, how to ask the right questions to change the chemistry in the brain, and how to get them to the point where they're going to say yes and yes to you, and they're going to say yes to you now. We're going to get there. It, Probably won't be on this call, but we're going to get there. These three questions or four questions actually are helping us get there. This is the narrative behind spin, situation, problem, impl implication, and need. So those are open-ended and closed-ended questions. Open-ended questions are great for digging into the pain, digging into the pain and finding out you know, what the real issue is and you know, increasing those stress levels just a little bit increasing the cortisol release, and then, boom, you hit them with good news. You hit them with great news, and that cortisol uh, starts to dissipate, and then back comes the dopamine. It really is, and I know I don't want to make this sound manipulative, but salespeople are not manipulative. They're influencers. They're absolutely influencers, and if you're doing it right and ethically, it's influencers in a positive way. Never use uh, these tools that I'm giving you for uh, for evil. <laughs> it's almost like a superhero thing. Use it for good, and you'll do, and great things will happen to you. So, one of the ways that I go from a closed-ended question, yes or no, to an open-ended question, 
uh, where I'm looking for more broader information uh, is I will start to think about where I am in the gradient that we talked about a little bit earlier. <clears throat> this was a few calls ago, maybe two calls ago. But one of the ways that I will get them out of the movie that they're in, especially after I've uh, uh, given them some negative things to think about, is I will start to ask them reflective questions. Reflective questions are nothing more than asking the prospect questions on how to say yes, or uh, they're going to say yes automatically to those reflective questions. It's really important that you guys uh, are thinking of this because this is the <coughs> this is the release of pressure or stress for that prospect. You've painted a picture, you've created tragedy. Now all of a sudden, you're building yourself back up to be the hero in the movie. Again, any movie that you've ever watched typically has these these um, storylines of tragedy and hero and all of these things. The same thing happens in sales. So a reflective question is a question that um, is going to have the prospect say, yes, I want to start getting the positivity out of them. And I also want to have them agree with me. So when I say some uh, reflective question to them, <clears throat> Notice that my body posture is going to be a little bit different. Let me show you what I mean. A self-reflective question are questions that make the prospect say yes and use, uh, watch these examples. Hey, do you like that? Hey, does that interest you? Is that important to you? That sounds wonderful, doesn't it? You would agree, wouldn't you? So all of those type of questions are short to the point, but the prospect is going to say, yeah, that makes sense. Hey, I agree with you there. Um, yeah, I do like that. And so when I'm asking all those questions, notice my body posture. And I maybe I didn't do it well in that first one, but let me just repeat that. Now, this is not something where you're going to want to sit back. You guys know, Duncan, you guys know. One more. Boom. This is not something that you guys are going to want to sit back and um, just be like this. Uh, does that sound good to you guys? Does that sound, do you like that? Uh, would you like that in your life? Are you, uh, you know, are you excited about that happening? Uh, you want to have a little bit of excitement. You want to lean forward, but more importantly, it's your facial expressions and what you're doing with your head. Do you like that? Does that sound good to you? And so see what I'm doing there? I'm smiling. I'm definitely nodding. I'm giving them a, um, a, um, uh, a primed pump almost, if you will, to say yes. I want them to say yes. I want them to say yes at least three times in that process. And then what I'm doing is by the time you get to the third yes question, I might go back to an open or a closed end question. But what I'm looking for is the last question of these four that I'm training you on. The first three come from you. The fourth one comes from who? If you said the prospect, you're absolutely right. The prospect. I'm looking for the prospect to ask this fourth question. <clears throat> what is this question? Well, you can see here on my notes. <clears throat> excuse me, John. Uh, guys. You can see here on my notes, it's a buying question. And this, my friends, is where the game turns into play. And this is where the chemistry changes from the prospect over to you. Watch this. Um, I'm going to tell this as a little bit of a story, a buying question from the prospect. The lion and the antelope. What triggers the lion to get into kill mode? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever asked, asked yourself that question? This happens when the antelope walks in the field of the lion. A switch flips on the lion. This is what happens when a buyer asks a buying question. A buying question triggers a shift for you in your sales mind, and this is when the chemistry starts to change in you. Now, the chemistry that changes in you, my friends, is now adrenaline. So you should be like this when you're asking those questions. When the prospect asks a buying question, that's when you're like this. 
that's when you're leaning forward. You're, you know what's going on. An antelope just walked in your field and you're the lion and your family's behind you starving. It's game time, baby. This is the time to go. And this is where we're going to switch into a couple of things. The next shift is called trial closes. And um, buying questions uh, trigger that. That's the exact moment when the sales process or the salesperson uh, gets the chemistry <coughs> from their brain and it's called adrenaline. You could probably see my energy going up just thinking about this, but adrenaline is the chemistry now that goes into your brain. You see, uh, just like you were the pharmacist for the prospect, the prospect is now the pharmacist for you. And they do that by asking a buying question. What is a buying question? Let's say that you're at a listing appointment and I go back to that episode of Tom and I'm talking to him about you know, his new job in Florida. He's got to sell his house up here in Illinois and, and he wants to move and buy a house down there. So a buying question from Tom, if I'm playing the role of Tom, would be something like, okay, so what's your process for uh, listing the house? You know, what's, what's the next steps? Oh, that's a buying question, my friend. Here's another buying question. Um, yeah, so tell me, what is the uh, commission rate that you would list my house for? Buying question. Um, here's another one. Once we get the house listed, how fast does it go up on the MLS? Buying question. Boom. That's when you, uh, again, are the lion, an antelope just walked in your field, and you got a hungry family behind you. That's it. That's the sale. This, for, you know, I, I don't want to go too much further in this because we got a huge topic to cover next uh, in our next uh, webinar, and that's trial closes and, and uh, ultimately getting to the close. But man, when they ask that buying question, they flip the switch, they flip the the uh, chemistry in your brain, they are now the pharmacist. You are, uh, have just got an injection of adrenaline and you're ready to go. And, and so again, this is, this is really, really important for you guys to know these four types of questions, closed-ended, open-ended, reflective questions, and a buying question. The first three come from the salesperson to the prospect. The fourth one comes from the prospect to the salesperson. That's kind of the, 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 the sequence of what is happening here. And you're only asking those open-ended questions, closed-ended questions, and reflective questions to get to a buying question from your prospect. If the buying question never comes from your prospect, keep asking those questions. Pete, keep asking and playing a movie in your prospect's mind because sooner or later they're going to ask for that. They're going to ask a buying question. Don't let them off the hook. Now be professional about it, right? You're not going <clears> to, <throat> you know, just shotgun questions at them for, you know, 30 minutes. But if you keep asking those questions and keep digging in the pain and keep asking in that uh, uh, sequence, open ended, closed ended, reflective questions open-ended, closed-ended, reflective questions, or closed-ended, open-ended, closed-ended, open-ended, reflective, reflective, reflective. Remember, you want to have three yeses. Usually by the time you get to your third yes in a row on reflective questions, it triggers something in the prospect typically to ask that buying question. And that means that you know that you've got them up the gradient. All of this takes practice. All of this does. This is where uh, you know, I think you can practice, you know, sometimes I practice in the shower. I, I practice like I'm talking to a prospect. Uh, I know that sounds kind of crazy. Other people practice with their significant other or spouses. That's cool too. Um, practice in everyday life practice. You know, if you're already in, uh, another business, uh, practice in that business, uh, practice with your children, you know, get your children to buy into cleaning the room. Matter of fact, that could be homework for all of you. If you have a child uh, to practice with, uh, get that child to clean up their bedroom or get that child to bring the laundry down from upstairs or whatever that is, but sell them. Sell them on that prospect. Try with open-ended questions. Try with closed-ended questions. Try with reflective questions. And then um, see if you can't get your child to ask a buying question. 
Um, <clears throat> well, if I do bring down that basket of clothes, um, am I able to get ice cream later? Buying question. And that's, I know that sounds so simple, but you could start that whole conversation off of, uh, hey, do you like ice cream? Uh, and, you know, any child's probably or most likely going to say, yeah. And then you can go into an open-ended question. Tell me about what you like so much about ice cream. Oh, I just like the way it tastes, and chocolate is my favorite flavor, and um, I could eat ice cream every day. I love it so much. That's an open-ended question. And a reflective question is, does it make you feel good uh, to eat ice cream? Yeah. Yeah, it makes me feel good. Uh, would you like to eat ice cream tonight? Yeah. See, when I'm asking that question, I'm asking and bringing up the desire. Would you like to have ice cream in 10 minutes? Yeah. Boom, desire. And then what I might do is, do you want ice cream bad enough to go bring the clothes down from your room upstairs? Boom. And then next thing should be a buying question. And that should be, um, well, if I bring the clothes down from upstairs, uh, could um, I have some ice cream later? Buying question. Boom. See how that's done? Now, I've got someone coming in the office here. I just got to let them know I'm in a webinar. Uh, but hold on one second for me. Hey, but they're not here right now on a webinar, but do you need to see Jack? Sure. Um, I He's, he won't be here until probably 40 minutes. Can you drop us something else, though? Um, yeah, I don't know where that would be, but he'll be back in about 40 minutes. Okay. Okay, you got it. Okay, that was a little timeout. We had, uh, I was on a webinar, or I told him I was on a webinar, so I got back here. But do you see how you can practice that? It's the ice cream and the kids. Do you love ice cream enough to get... Uh, your clothes down from upstairs? Well, if I do that, will I have ice cream now? Buying question. And you don't have to do it with ice cream. You know, obviously, I'm not trying to have uh, kids be a, uh, uh, you know, we got to think about sweets and, and uh, eating right and things like that. It could be anything. It could be time to play outside. It could be staying up late to watch the next show. It could be iPad coverage, you know, watching an iPad. Any of these things could be practice points with your kids. Kids are great because they have no, they don't know what you're doing. Your spouse may not be as great because they don't necessarily know what's going on. Um, and uh, so kids are great to practice on. Boom. I just thought I'd drop that uh, little bit of knowledge uh, on you there. So yeah, um, keep in mind a couple of these things. Open-ended questions, closed-ended questions, and reflective questions come from you. A buying question comes from the prospect. Both sides change chemistry there, both sides. Um, and once you get to the buying question, your posture changes. Remember your posture in so far. In open-ended questions, you should be like, you know, really listening and involved in what they're saying, both in open and in closed-ended uh, questions. Um, and you should really be kind of, uh, you know, following along the conversation. A reflective question, again, you want to smile, you want to be like, that how, That sounds good to you, right? You know, that type of activity uh, not only builds rapport, but it also lets the prospect know that you're in sync. And then finally, um, the posture from respect to a uh, closed, open, and reflective question should be like this. If the prospect asks a buyer's question like, okay, so what's the next steps in getting my house listed? Or once I have the house listed with you, how long does it go up till it, till it goes up on the MLS? Or are you hungry enough? Are you, I'm sorry, are you, do you love ice cream enough to bring the clothes uh, from upstairs down to the laundry room? Yeah, but dad, if I do that, will I get ice cream now? Buying question. All of those cases of buying questions, boom. Antelope just walked in your field and you want to be ready to go. Uh, and, and what's going to be next is something that is an art more than a science, but it's the art of trial closes and it's the art of closing uh, and closing. When somebody is already sold, you don't want to sell anymore. You want to close. There's a switch that you have to make. I see, <coughs> man, I see salespeople 
where the, the, the prospect is already asking buying questions and they're ready to be closed and the salesperson keeps selling them. Um, that's a way to lose the sale for sure. So we're going to talk about that on our next webinar, The Art of the Trial Close. We're going to have trial close scripts for you to do. We're going to have trial close uh, and, and closing techniques and strategies for you to do. So you get that listing appointment and you get it today. And by the time you practice this and work this, it's going to be second nature to all of you. Um, I was talking to somebody on the phone. Let's see, today's Wednesday. That was yesterday. And he was doing the training, uh, but he was selling at the same time. And, and that person got it. He's a veteran in the sales space. And he just does this instinctively. I, I couldn't even tell you if he just in his mind is going through open, closed, and um, reflective questions. But you know, I'm here to tell you that like, once you start to do it in real world applications, it becomes second nature and you won't even think about it. So that's it. That's our training for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. It's all about questions. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to label this questions are the answer. Uh, but it's all about those four questions and getting to the point where you're doing a trial close and then a close. We will get there the next time. Remember, wealth has nothing to do with money. Life, uh, success has everything to do with failure, and life is as simple as you want to make it. Good luck, everybody, this week. We will talk to everybody next week on the webinar, and uh, have a great week, guys. We'll talk soon.